Hey, welcome to today's podcast. Welcome to Western New York Entrepreneur. Well, we help entrepreneurs take the next step in their own business. And as you can see here, or can't see if you're listening in the car, um, we have Joe. Uh, Joe, can you say your last name one time for me? Sikorsky. Sikorsky. So Joe Sikorsky is a musician, an artist, and uh, in fact, again, I never want to steal someone's bio away from that. Sure, Joe, what sure. for our listeners and viewers, what should they know about you? Uh, yep, I'm a local musician, artist. Um, trying to make my way in the music scene and uh, things are happening really quickly and it's getting getting really fun <laughs> and really exciting. So yeah. That's what people keep telling me how you during the last nine months you've really just blown up. Yeah. Yeah, it's and it, it has to do with focus, I think. Okay. Finally taking that focus and making it your directive, I think, is kind of a big thing. So, yeah. yeah. So for thus for especially you can like just like many of our our uh, interviewees Often, she's like, you guys, this is, their, this is your first time listening to them. This is my first time meeting them. So for, uh, again, <laughs> us that you know don't know much about you, Joe, besides sure. people referring me to you for the podcast, what should people know about you? Um, well, first and foremost, I'm a guitarist. Um, that would be, I guess, my main label as a musician. Um, I've been playing guitar and playing in bands and writing music for about 20 years now. Okay. So um, I started at a very... Late age, as far as being a musician goes, 16 years old as you, is a little bit on the late side. Mm -hmm. So, but I took to it pretty quickly and became obsessive with it. And um, I, you know, changed my style over the years. And I wanted to be a blues musician and I wanted to be Pink Floyd. And then it took a while, it takes a while to find the kind to find your voice. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? As an artist, you spend years and years copying, which is, I think, what you should do naturally, is you should copy everything you hear or see until you find you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to find your voice, you know, so that you can give whatever it is inside of you to the world. I mm -hmm. think that's what being an artist is. So it's been 20 years of trying to find me, and you're right, in the last nine months, it's, I think I finally found myself after... You know, twenty years. So it's been yeah, great. yeah. So what do you what do you credit to that to the blow up from the last nine months? Um, a shift in focus for sure. I mean, I've always been really, really dedicated as a guitar player. I'm, anybody who knows me will tell you that it's borderline obsessive how I am as a musician. But shifting my focus and just kind of realizing one day that even though the job that I was in and that was funding me being a, mus a musician was, you know, it was a great career. It was great money and everything like that. I woke up going, this isn't, I can't do this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to be me. This, I can't do it. There's something else. And every time I pick up the guitar is happy time. I mean, it's always good. Even if it's playing at the corner for free, it's a good thing. And I think finally finding and figuring, figuring out that, that's what I need to be doing, and that's at the end of the day what I want to be doing is what made me go, okay, I have to put, not 100%, I have to put 180% into this if I want anything to come out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I did. Yeah, so when you say you focus, do you focus more on the marketing aspect of it, focusing on writing more songs? Yeah, like, what was the, what that's, a, that's a great question because one of the things that you find is that, and I'm sure you know, there's all kinds of talented musicians around. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're going to make money or make a living out of it. Mm -hmm. That just means that you're a talented musician that has no idea what the business side is, what the marketing side is, how to make yourself stand out, how to get your art out there, how to make money from your art, mm -hmm. how to get people who say, oh, I need to buy this mm -hmm. or I need to support this musician. Mm -hmm. So knowing marketing and knowing people and following you know, the marketing trends in music and knowing when to clip in and go... Well, they haven't seen this yet. That's a huge part of it. So okay. Knowing how to deliver, even if you're a simple folk musician, mm -hmm. knowing how to deliver your art is probably the most important thing next to actually knowing how to play the instrument, I would say. Yeah. yeah so. so delivering your art, can you be more specific? Sure. Um, today, the market is pretty saturated as mm -hmm. far as music goes. There's, you know, there's so many streaming services. There's... Spotify, I mean, you can just throw stuff up on YouTube, there's SoundCloud, I mean, there's a billion ways to get your music out there. So you need to know how to stand out and make people go, oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen this before. Mm -hmm. And one of those, there's two things that I find that people gravitate towards, and that's visually, mm -hmm. something has to catch up, because it's a media-driven world now, yep. right? You can't just 
hear someone and go, oh, he's awesome. Oh, let's book him then just based on that. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. You, something has to catch your eye now because people spend every they spend their time on this, right? Yeah. So you need something that's visually appearing that's going to have someone stop and go, what is that? I have to check that out. And then you have to be, as a musician, you have to be sonically pleasing and sonically different and interesting enough. So, that's so good. So like delivering... And so what I'm getting at is, it's cutting if I'm wrong here, I could totally miss the point. I mean, <laughs> delivering it, it's more of like, like, so when you're delivering your art, it's more of like making sure that it gravitates. Like, people like, can want to buy it. Like, it's actually like, um, it just catches them. Right. I guess you would say, okay. Yeah, they have to walk by. You have to, you know, to get something off of the shelf, you, someone has to go buy it. And the shelf is, I'm using that as, you know, an analogy. But yeah. whether it's a digital shelf or a physical shelf, someone has to walk by it or see it and go, that interests me. That's the first step, or else they're not going to click on it to hear it play. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sample it. They're not going to do anything. That they're just going to keep walking. Right. You know, you can't. There's so much white noise these days. You have to. You know, you got like what ten seconds. Ex yeah, <laughs> ten seconds, especially with people's attention span today. Yeah, at least mine. Maybe less. Like, yeah, mine too. Less than that, maybe. <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah. Well, I goes by and you lost me. But uh, that being said, though, so you might have answered this question already, mm -hmm. but. Is you totally nailed it. There are so many artists out there. There's so much, you know, artistry out there, right? Sure. Yep. So for artist friends out there, or artist entrepreneurs, they either want to break into or really want to break the barrier, if you will, of making it bigger than where they are. What advice? Like, how do you stand out above all that white noise? Yeah. How do you stand out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, one thing you got to do is you have to hone your craft. Whether you're a painter, a poet. A guitar player, a sex, it doesn't matter. You have to you have to be authentic and real. Mm -hmm. You can't just be cookie cutter. And if all you want to do is strum and play songs, okay. Then you can you can do that. But if you want to put food on the table and pay your mortgage with this, you have to be authentic. You have to it has to be second nature. That's first and mm -hmm. foremost. Second you have got to be different than the next guy. Mm -hmm. You can't be, and I'll use blues as an analogy. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of blues players just in this country. And blues is a very simple style. It's a very soulful style. It's a very um, passionate style. But at its base, it's a very simple style. So to be different than the next guy, you have to have a little something extra. You can't expect to play the same notes, the same licks, the same songs as this guy mm -hmm. and stand out. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, so now you're a little different. Um, you've honed your craft. You're authentic. Now what? You have to be able to market yourself. Mm -hmm. You can't just cold call all day and expect to get gigs. Mm -hmm. You can't um, expect studios to just open their doors for you. You can't expect your logo that's just your name to be something that catches somebody's eye. You have to do all these things, and you have to do them all simultaneously, and you have to do them incessantly, mm -hmm. relentlessly. You have to push, 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 or you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, like, for our logo, I I brought this because... Yeah, I, yeah. This I was on and I was learning all about it, so this for is, viewers that are watching the video... There's our logo, right? Mm -hmm. I hope they can see that. So, yeah. now, our normal colors, this is the shirt that I had on us, but it's actually um, black, with a red logo, and then we have this one as okay, well. Okay, just a different of the many. Right, and it means something, and it's got layers to it, but on top of that, it's also catchy. Mm -hmm. It's got a shape, it's geometric, people stop and go, hey, I can't tell you how many times people say, hey, well, here's the actual logo, just in case. Yeah. That's what it actually looks like. Okay. So it's got this angular shape, it's familiar, but it's different enough where people stop and say, what is that? Yeah. And we've branded the band as insoluble, and that's, you know, it's a scientific term and people uh -huh. go hey what's that mean yeah. and right there if they're asking the questions you've already got something exactly you've got something that's half the battle it's half the battle you can't just say i mean of course legos is very famous but you can't today just say legos and yeah. then expect everybody to go okay yeah yeah you know yeah. what i mean you got to be different you have to have something behind it yeah so i'd say marketing um being good at your instrument um and being relentless are ways that you have to embrace those and, and grind to, to, to make it. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's so good. So, again, putting you on the spot, because we didn't really talk too much about what we're going to talk about on the we podcast. Of course, we talked personally, you know, and what or ideas we want to share on the podcast. We did our homework. We didn't just press play. But 
in a way almost did. But that, <laughs> with that being said, so what are like two or three marketing tips that you have for artists out there or musicians that you think that you, that, you know, kind of simple ones? I know every, you know, every situation is different, but you got like two or three tips for, for us out there? Sure. As an artist, now this is, this is for artists. Um, this may not work in other fields, but for an artist, you have to have um, a relationship with your fans that makes them want to come see you, that makes them want to gravitate towards you, and makes them want to talk to you, engage with you, and have an experience with mm -hmm. you. So part of that, um, what Insoluble does is, um, we've got a whole marketing plan. We haven't released our, um, we just finished recording um, at GCR Audio, okay. which is a studio for you Buffalo natives, you'll, you will know who the Goo Goo Dolls are. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Takehack uh, bought the studio um, so that it didn't go to waste. It used to be Trackmaster Studio, and they put all this money into it. It's the best studio you can play in outside of New York City. Oh, wow. It's the best. Okay. And the quality of the recording that comes out of that reflects that. Okay. But we are on the cusp of releasing new music, and one of the marketing ideas that I had and this is good for musicians, and I really think that we should embrace this, um, is not just going, hey, here's a CD every three years, because when's the last time you bought music? Yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah, it, even me, and I'm a musician. Like you, If you want to hear a song and you don't have the CD, what do you do? You go to YouTube, right? Yeah. Everybody does that, and that's fine. Yeah. But you have to, you have to offer a little more, you have to, do something to get that that mm. buy and get that music. So mm. what you should be doing marketing wise is, in my opinion, you should have some kind of platform that they're paying for and that recording that you release is already included in that. Okay. You get that recording. Okay. Like we're not gonna make you buy 10 songs every three years, go out on tour, you're a, you're a piece of da data, mm -hmm. a, you know, a faceless mm -hmm. or a nameless face that we see in the audience and mm -hmm. then we'll see you in three years. Yeah, Can't do that. Mm -hmm. So Insoluble offers the ultimate um, fan band experience where you're part of the story, you're, you're part of it. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're a member of this thing, um, there's different levels of membership mm -hmm. that we're going to have, and depending on what your level is, when music is released, whether it's one song or three songs, you're going to get all kinds of merch just associated with that song. Yeah. So that each song is a huge story for that fan, and mm -hmm. not just like this is song three on the latest album. Right. So being different, looking, thinking outside the box for marketing is huge. Everyone's bored with the same marketing tactics. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how. But if you're in manufacturing, it's lean processes to get you know keep your quality up, your numbers down, and pumping out volume. That's their marketing, yeah. Tip, right? Yeah. For the musician and the artist. It has to be about the music and the art, and you have to step outside the box and keep it artistic and keep it creative. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my marketing idea. I no, think it's that's working. Really, it's really good. It's very progressive. Yeah, you exactly. Know? It's very progressive. So do you find, by the way, being a musician, you know, I want to say market, but just in that you know area of people, do you find that most musicians just want to produce and say, I just want people to buy it? Yeah. Do you really, do you really feel that way, or I do mean, you think there's not natural? Uh, it's hard to. Um, I want to make sure I'm careful with my words here. Like, do you find that most people just like they kind of just hope people buy? They don't actually want to be relentless. They don't want to be, or maybe they're just not. They don't feel like they're the sale hunch. But I just want to produce music. I'm not a salesman. Like, yeah, I would feel that. Yeah, you you touched on a, a really important note. The it is the music business, and as much as artists want to just be artists and go, here's my stuff, please buy it, and then you know, go to sleep at night and wake up and have their bank account be six figures. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. You have to embrace the, the business side. You have to be a businessman today to survive. There's too many people. There's too much saturation. You have to take control of your own destiny and, and, and form, form what it is you're going to do. You can't just pass it off. Because if you pass it off, you know, especially in the music business, somebody else gets their hand on it, and now you don't make any money. Mm -hmm. They're making money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so you actually, so you actually might have interrupted with my next question, which is a good thing. But 
So for those like me, that's just not in my blood. I'd rather just produce music. I am not an actual born salesman. It could be an excuse, right? But in the same breath, do you think it's like, well, that's too bad, then I guess you're not cut off for it? Or do you think it's just like, hey, maybe you should do this instead then? Or Right. There are other. Right. There are definitely other avenues that if you want to maintain um, the lifestyle of a musician and, and not be in that, there are other things you can do. Um, being a studio or session player is one of the things that you can do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being a guitarist for a studio, like for GCR, mm -hmm. I'm on I'm on their docket now as a as a player. So if mm -hmm. they get a musician in that maybe she's just a singer and she you know wrote the songs but isn't co comfortable playing the guitar or the chords or the piano, they call me. Okay. And then I come in and I play those parts, mm -hmm. and then you get a credit and you get paid, mm -hmm. and you don't have to do too much. Okay. You know, you don't have to market yourself. You basically work for studios, mm -hmm. and you can do the same thing live. You can mm -hmm. be hired out as a as a live touring musician. I know exactly what you're saying. So you, yeah, you can do that stuff like that. Okay. But so let's just say though you're so like, let's say you are the girl who just plays the songs, right? Mm -hmm. And you know she's not that talented guitarist, or she's not talented enough where they would hire someone like you to play the things. But let's say she's like, well, I really I think I'm a good singer. Let's say she is a good singer. Okay. So like, what do you think? You know, any advice for people out there? Like, you know what? I wouldn't. I'm not good enough to play in that realm. I'm gonna be hired out. Right. So how do I get more sales from my music? I I, I know it's probably a hard question to answer because it's not one size fits all. Right. But any any ideas there? Yeah, um, surround yourself with people who are better than you, mm -hmm. I think is a, is a huge thing. You know, when you work at a company, if you're in the room, you don't want to be the smartest or most talented person there mm -hmm. because then nobody else is going to have the answers for you. Mm -hmm. So I think if you aren't comfortable yet with your level of musicianship or you're just starting and you want to get better and you want to make sure that when you go to record or you go to play that you have the resources around you, you have to thrust yourself into the situation of being around people who are much better than you so that you can learn. You'll elevate yourself naturally. You yeah. know what I mean? I know exactly what you're you saying. You know, if you, like, you're in shape. When you go to the gym or, like, when I used to go to jiu-jitsu, and you're scared at first because it's like, uh, these guys are so much better. You can fool me like a pretzel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you, have to, you have to dive into the fire. Mm -hmm. Because once you dive into the fire a couple times, yeah. it doesn't burn as much. And you start to learn a few little things. Mm -hmm. Then you, you get that confidence. And then you go into the studio. A lot of your performance, um, musically, mm -hmm. if you aren't free and confident, you'll lock up and you will not play or perform the best mm -hmm. that you can. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. That's really good. So we talked a lot about success or how to create that anyways as a musician. Sure. But I want to, talk, I want to switch it a little bit. So... As a musician for the last twenty years, what was one like? What is the one or two biggest mistakes you think you made? Oh, this is good. Uh, thousands. Yeah. Uh, the two biggest ones. One is um, thinking that I couldn't make a living. Thinking that I had to make it mm -hmm. in order to make a living, okay. which is not true. Okay. Um, especially just like we talked about some of the negatives about. Social media and media being the way that it is for the artist, there are enormous benefits because now anybody can get their stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And forever I was like, oh, well, if I can't have the million dollar contract, then I might as well just go get a regular job. Yeah. Which is dumb. Like, why would you do that? So you sold yourself the lie. I, yeah, exactly. I, I sold myself the lie. <laughs> and it's a horrible lie. And again, I guess the main message in that big failure that I had for that lasted for what eighteen years. Okay. <laughs> Not, yeah. it, it wasn't really a failure, but I needed I things unfolded exactly how they should have. But um, one of the things that you take from that is if you aren't spending all that time invested in your art, you will lose it if you aren't careful. Mm -hmm. You will like. Thankfully, I did not. But you could wake up one day, and you might have been the most talented saxophone player on the planet. Mm -hmm. But after fifteen years of not making it, quote yeah, unquote. and putting your all into it because you thought you wouldn't make it, you know, then you realize maybe you don't have the passion, and you start living this comfortable life mm -hmm. where you're like, okay, I have a routine. I get up, I go to work at eight o'clock, I come home at four o'clock, I feed the dog, turn on the TV, and that's it. Yeah. Well, you get comfortable with that, and then the thought of bringing that passion back and jumping into that fire we were talking mm -hmm. about 
it scares the living daylights out of you. So you don't, your body won't produce that passion anymore. Mm -hmm. It gets locked up and it gets. So it's like you up. almost associate it with fear. It, you know, it's like exactly. a, oh, I lost my passion. You associate it with fear. Exactly. So, exactly. so after eighteen years of that, how did you like? How did you not make sure? Because sometimes our body just subconsciously trains itself in the wrong way. Yeah, it rewires itself, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah it's so like I, after, yeah, so. Yeah. Any, so for people that are kind of at that point right now, like what state they've been doing it for years, months, sometimes months feels like an eternity, right? Like, well, I, I've i been struggling for 18 months, not 18 years, right? Yeah. So they people that want to give up or they're starting to become that way. I don't want to say apathetic, but they started losing their drive, but really it might be fear or just I'm tired, I'm sick and tired of being, being sick and tired, I guess you would say. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. any, any advice for them or any thoughts or anything that you think they should know? If you think... For one second, that when the day that you can't physically do it anymore, you're going to be filled with regret, go pick it up. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. I, I, that's the big eye opener. It's like you can walk by your canvases, your microphone, your guitar every day. One day, you might not actually be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And if that day comes and you're filled with regret because you missed out on all these years, whether you make a million dollars or not, whether you're just making enough to live, mm -hmm. if you if that will happen to you and you feel that regret, go pick it up because mm -hmm. that's the worst regret. I've had regret like that just over weeks. Mm -hmm. The enormous amount of guilt that comes from knowing that you can do something very well and just letting it slip out of your hand. It's a guilt that you don't want to feel. Yeah, and no pun intended, but like you didn't sing the song you were meant to sing. <laughs> right. you know, no pun intended, you know, that, yeah. but it's good pun though. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Because so many of us like well when you start living little by little apathetic lives and that's just not fun, right? You were right. meant to sing what you were supposed to sing. You're you know, some of you guys just have gifts that honestly I wish I could have. I wish I had the gift of singing. I right. wish I had the gift of and I'm a horrible I'm horrible in both. <laughs> I mean, ask my fiance, I sing in the shower, I'm horrible. You know, <laughs> shut up, Dave. You know, who sings that song? Yeah, let's keep it that way, right? You know, yeah, all the jokes. All yeah. those yeah. things. Yeah. But that being said, we are 20, we only have like, what, a couple of minutes left. Okay. Is there something that, um, actually, for the, those that are really connecting with this whole podcast with you and they want to connect with you, what's the best way they can connect with you, Joe? Um, you can go to my website, uh, which is jms, or jm Sikorsky, S I K O R S K I dot com. That's my personal musician website. Mm -hmm. So for people who want uh, guitar lessons locally or I, I do them via Skype, FaceTime, whatever you have to do, I offer lessons. Um, Insoluble's Facebook. It, I have a Facebook for Insoluble, my band, and I have a Facebook under Joe Sikorsky. Mm -hmm. and How do you spell your last name? S-I-K-O-R-S-K-I. Good. Nice and Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so for those that don't know, by the way, he actually, Joe used to run a podcast. So Savage that being podcast. yeah, yeah. So that being said, Savage Podcast. Yeah. That's a good name, you know, because that's a big uh, you know uh, name these days. Like, yes, you know, like, oh, that was Savage, right? Yep. yep. So that was good. So that being said, what advice do you have for us podcasters out there? It's it's almost the same exact thing. You got to be different. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you're talking, what you obviously do. Mm -hmm. So you're you're fine there. You got to be different. Know your audience. Know who you're reaching, mm -hmm. and then not just know them, but know how to get outside of that. So if you're, uh, you know, your audience is probably mostly entrepreneurs or mm -hmm. people in the business world, mm -hmm. you obviously know that very well. Um, and then not being afraid to um, vary it up. With the Savage Podcast, we, if you listen to it, it's just, it's like a variety show almost. We talked about, we both trained, so we talked about MMA, uh, upcoming UFC fights, uh, we would review albums, we would review Books sounds we, like whatever was on the mind that day. Whatever was on the mind, and we we were very much like that. Like yeah. it was like we're we're you know progressive. I like to think of myself as a progressive thinker. So yeah. we didn't really leave anything outside of the box, and because of that, we had a very very good following in yeah. several countries, which was amazing. That's very cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, know your audience, know how to grow your audience, be different. Don't be afraid to vary it up and add you know fun stuff and exciting stuff for the viewer or the listener yeah. and just know know what you're talking about I'd say yeah that's, that's good sense, yeah. I like that 